A few months ago, Astrotech contacted me and asked if I wanted to review their newest IEMs they call the Vesna. Intrigued, I said yes. I have never before heard an Astrotech product, so this would be a nice change of pace, hopefully. Given the chance to test either the Vesna or the Vesna Evo, I opted for the Evo. Astrotech sent me a pair to review. The Evo is $35. What does this little product have to offer? The stock Vesna and Vesna Evo have a few differences. The Evo has a detachable cable and a different color. And that's it, at least as far as Astrotech's marketing is concerned. The Evo uses a single liquid crystal polymer diaphragm in each earbud. Astrotech says that this LCP driver, quote, achieves a good balance between the two contradictory characteristics of high rigidity and high internal loss. They also claim it can effectively suppress the segmentation of vibration, thereby reducing noise and accurately restoring the sound. Astrotech says the Evo has low distortion and vivid sound. They also say that the IEM will, quote, accurately restore every note as an elf whispering in your ear. They further state that the Evo has weighty bass, graceful mid-range, and ethereal treble. This is among the most nonsensical marketing mumbo-jumbo I have ever heard. And for IEMs, that's saying something. Often, IEM manufacturers will throw random words at the screen, but when elves and ethereal treble become involved, we've reached a new level of silliness. The Evo's box does have an FR graph printed on the back. This graph suggests a sub-bass boost, followed by a neutral mid-bass and mids, and then a substantial peak in the 2K region and a drop-off in the treble. Whether any of this is actually true is debatable. There is at least one FR graph for the Venza, the original version, and it shows a U-shaped signature. If Astrotech's comments are true and there are no sound differences between the Evo and the stock Vesna, then this third-party graph would suggest a sound signature different from what Astrotech implies on the product box. The Evo reminds me of the Tin Hi-Fi T2. Both IEMs have a bullet-shaped design. Both are made of aluminum. There's not much to say about the construction of the Evo. It just seems sturdy. The design may not be suitable for everyone since this IEM will jut out of your ears. And depending on your wearing preferences, someone might want an IEM that actually nestles into the ear cavity, which this IEM will not do. The Evo comes with a few accessories. This includes a handful of cynical ear tips, which all seem well made. You also get a surprisingly strong carrying bag and a two-pin cable. The cable is pliable, soft, and prone to little microphonics. I've seen and purchased cables of this type for around $20 to $25, so it's really nice to see something like this in a $35 IEM. As for comfort, the Evo fits me as well as the Tin Hi-Fi T2. The ear tips are reasonably comfortable, though will create some pressure points over time. I found that I had to adjust the earbuds from time to time due to the cable occasionally pulling them slightly out of my ears. But I had no trouble wearing the Evo for about two hours at a time before needing a break. Overall, the Evo's construction is good. It's nothing groundbreaking, and in light of Tin Hi-Fi's long-standing T2 series, it seems nothing exceptional at this point. The accessories are reasonable, and the cable is definitely an upgrade in this price category. To test the Evo, I used it with a number of devices. This includes the Modi and Liquid Spark stack, the RME ADI2 DAC, and the EcoZerta ITM03. I used the stock accessories and listened to my test playlist on Amazon Music HD and Cobus. The Evo is very easy to drive. Plug it directly into your mobile device or PC and it will get sufficient power for peak performance. If you choose to use an amp, a modestly powerful one will be plenty. My tests indicate that the Evo has a neutral sub-bass and a marginal emphasis in mid-bass. In Mountains by Hans Zimmer, there's a rumble at the beginning. This builds into a crescendo. The Evo presented this sound from the beginning. The transients was about as fast as what I heard on the neutral Moondrop quartz. When the crescendo hit, the organ melded with the other instruments. The rolling thunder effect was audible, but did not overpower any other element. There was a noticeable separation among the various group sets. When the vocals chimed in, they rose from the background until they were about one step ahead of the instruments. In Conquer by Overwork, there's a rolling marble sound at the beginning. This pans from right to left to center. The Evo presented this sound effect. 
There are multiple drums in this track and the Evo rendered all of them clearly. There was some melding from one drum strike to the next. Each strike was hard and, frankly, a little sharp. The quirks in contrast had less sharpness, probably by a few decibels. I listened to several hip-hop songs including Pure Water, New Patek, Reel It In, and Uproar. On each occasion, the Evo rendered the sub-bass without forcing me to increase volume to ear-splitting levels. The subwoofer sounded like it was in the middle of a medium-sized room. The drums were a little louder. The vocals were two steps ahead of the instruments and retained their sparkle. There was no muddiness between the sub-bass and mid-bass. I listened to my Sicario playlist. I used these songs to determine if there's any audible bass distortion. Traversing from low to high volumes, I could not hear any distortion. Overall, it seems to me that the Evo has a fairly neutral sub-bass but a marginally emphasized mid-bass. The difference here was noticeable when comparing against the neutral Moondrop quarks, but it wasn't night and day in contrast. My tests indicate that the Evo has slightly forward mids with sibilant vocals. In Orla Gartland's song Why Am I Like This, there's natural vocal grain and sibilants mixed in. The Evo seemed to keep the grain neutral, similar to what I heard on the quarks. However, the Evo did emphasize the sibilants by a few decibels. This was clearly different from the quarks presentation. Orla's voice was about two steps ahead of the instruments. There was marginal melding between the drums and guitar. In Want You Back by Haim, the Evo demonstrated again that it does slightly emphasize female vocal sibilants. Compared to the quarks, this emphasis was present and patently obvious. At 8 seconds, the primary singer says the word we and drags it out, making it sound gravelly. The Evo rendered this detail. There are two backup vocalists, one in either channel. The Evo presented their voices separately. When the instruments played at maximum, all three voices retained their separation and clarity. There was minimal melding between the drums, guitar, piano, and bass. The vocals were two steps ahead of the instruments. In Superposition by Yantha Giant, the Eva presented the drums, ukulele, and bass clearly. No instrument seemed to overpower any other. The primary male vocalist was two steps ahead of the instruments. His vocal sibilance was not emphasized and sounded very similar to what I heard on the quarks. There's a backup singer whose voice is layered beneath the primaries. Most IEMs and headphones cannot reveal this detail. The Evo did. I could distinctly hear the second voice as a slightly different tonality, but I had to concentrate. Between 1 minute and 10 and 1 minute and 20 seconds, there are sharp intakes of breaths. The Evo rendered this detail. Overall, the Evo seems to have forward mids. Female vocals get a sibilance emphasis if that detail is recorded into the track. The mids remain clear and there is obvious separation among mid-centric elements. My test suggests that the Evo has a very marginal emphasis in around the upper treble area. In Skirts for X-Wings, the Evo presented the brass and horns clearly. Their tonalities remained separate throughout the composition. Their nasally signatures shown through the other elements. However, the higher pitched notes appear to have a marginal emphasis compared to the Moondrop quarks. It just seemed that the upper register notes had a bit more volume on the Evo. The timpani was audible, but never overpowered the other instruments. The Evo has width and depth, but no verticality. Instruments sound further out into the wings or deeper into the orchestral arrangement, but sounds never come from above or below. In Flight from the City, the Evo made the piano sound like I was about 5 feet away. The bassy notes sounded similar to what I heard on the quarks. The cello remained separate and, for the lack of a better phrase, smooth. I could easily hear the pops and sizzles, electric buzzing, shifting of the cello's weight, and creaking of the wood. In Take 5 by the De Brupac Quartet, the Evo rendered the piano in the right, drums in the left, saxophone center, and bass one step behind. The saxophone's higher pitched notes seemed to get a bit of emphasis compared to the quarks. This was maybe a few decibels. All instruments remain separate and distinct. The cymbals are struck at different positions, which should result in varying tonalities. The Evo clearly rendered that detail. Overall, the Evo seems to have close to neutral treble rendition with a very marginal upper treble emphasis. The treble area is clear. Astrotech doesn't say anything about the detailability of the Evo. My experience with this IM left me with one impression. It is clear and provides above average detail retrieval. I never struggled to hear the obvious or those aspects which I consider to be more subtle details. Twangs of guitar strings, multiple vocalists, layered vocals, sharp intakes of breaths, creaking of wood, shifting of a cello's weight, gravelly natures of voices, pops and sizzles, and electric buzzing effects are all details easily audible on the Evo. I have a quantitative test for detail retrieval. I use Kazuki's song New Light, which has layers of details. 
This includes the sound of wind, rustling of grass, children playing, synth, piano, and footsteps. I count the number of footsteps I can hear in the first 60 seconds. The WGT2 presents 9 to 10 footsteps. The Heidi's MS2, 8 to 9. The Tin Hi-Fi T2 and T2 Evo present 7 to 8 each. The Mudrop Aria presents 7 footsteps. The T2 Plus, Blonde BL05, and the Theodi Legacy 2 present 6 to 7 footsteps. The Moondrop Starfield presents 6 footsteps. The Moondrop Quarks, Blonde BL03, and Triple Wind Melee each present 5 to 6. And the Astrotech Vesna Evo rendered 8 footsteps. For my detail resolution scale, I use the Moondrop Aria and Starfield as the average performers. Any IEM that provides more or less footsteps is judged accordingly. Thus, on my scale, the BL03 would be considered below average and the Tin Hi-Fi T2 would be above average. Using this standard, it seems clear to me that the Evo has above average detail retrieval. Of course, changing ear tips or applying EQ might alter your experience. The Evo's marketing does not make any claims about the soundstage performance. The type of ear tips you use, the insertion depth of the IEMs, and the music you listen to will all have some influence on your perception of soundstage. In my experience, the Evo has above average soundstage. The Evo provides clarity, separation, and placement. It has depth and width, but no verticality. Just as with the detailed resolution test, I also have a scale for soundstage. For me, this involves, yet again, using the Moondrop Aria and Starfield as the average performers. Anything that has greater or lesser soundstage is judged accordingly. The Tin Hi-Fi T2 and Heidi's MS2 have above average soundstage. The Blonde BL03 and 05S are average at best, and perhaps slightly below average in soundstage depending on proper fit. The Starfield, Aria, and Quarks are average. I would place the Evo on the same rung as the Tin T2. It's possible that the T2 is just a little bit wider, but I don't think it's a significant difference. You could stare at Astrotech's marketing all day and not get a fair idea of what the Evo is supposed to sound like. I have no idea why companies have such a difficult time putting into direct terms what the voicing of their IEMs or headphones are. I mean, they made them, so just tell us. If you look at the graph on the Evo's packaging, you get a different impression than the Vesna's third-party graph available online. They contradict each other, and that's before we debate whether one or the other is reliable to begin with. My experience with the Evo is different from both the graphs, if that has any bearing. The Evo has a neutral sub-bass but a Marshall McBass emphasis. There's at least average clarity in the bass region and minimal bass bleed into the mids. The mids are forward. Vocals stand two steps ahead of instruments. Female vocalists will receive a sibilance boost, if sibilance is recorded into the track. Mid-centric elements are clear and separated. The treble seems to be fairly close to neutral until the upper treble region, where there seems to be a slight upward deviation. Again, the Evo is clear in this area and does not sound harsh even at high volumes. The Evo has above average detail and soundstage. I think, generally speaking, the Evo is a balanced sounding IEM. The slight bass emphasis, marginal push in both the mids and treble results in an IEM that is clearly not neutral. But neither is this IEM bassy or analytical. I never thought that the Evo was shoving details into my ears, nor did I ever feel that this IEM was missing vocals, scooping them out, or aggressively emphasizing drums or treble. Whether this IEM fits your preferences is something only you can determine. We should compare products as often as possible. We need to know if today's newest gear is tomorrow's forgotten throwaway toy, or something worth seriously considering. Here we will compare the Evo against the Tin T2, Blonde BL03, and the Moondrop Aria. All three competitors are popular for their own reasons, so should provide a good basis for comparison. I use stock accessories for all devices. I plug them into my passive AB switch, which was plugged into my RME ADI2 DAC. I listen to my test playlist on Amazon Music HD and Kobus. I try to volume match. The T2 has a noticeable sub-bass roll-off compared to the Evo. The T2 does not have a mid-bass emphasis unlike the Evo. Drum strikes are a little sharper on the Evo. Reverberation and transients is nearly identical, with perhaps the Evo with slightly longer in both respects. The mids are somewhat similar. Both IEMs push vocals forward, about by two steps ahead of instruments. Vocals are more clear and separated from instruments on the T2. Both IEMs emphasize sibilance, and I think nearly to the same degree. Mid-centric clarity is about the same, with neither IEM producing clearer details in this region. 
The treble is slightly more elevated on the T2 compared to the Evo. Clarity and separation of treble instruments is similar. The T2 has marginally wider soundstage, but both IEMs produce about the same amount of detail. The BL-03 has a vastly different bass rendition than the Evo. The 03 has a noticeable emphasis in both sub-bass and mid-bass. The Evo has greater separation between both regions, with greater clarity and faster transients. The 03 has noticeable bass bleed into the mids, while the Evo barely does. The mids are different. Both IEMs emphasize vocal sibilance, but I think the 03 has a slightly greater push. The 03 also emphasizes vocal grain, and the Evo does not. Vocals appear a little closer to the ears on the 03. There's noticeably greater separation and clarity in the Miz region on the Evo. The treble is also a little different. Both the Evo and the 03 have a treble emphasis. Neither has a significant push, in my opinion. However, it seems to me that the 03's emphasis of the upper treble was just a little bit louder than that of the Evo. The Evo has greater clarity in the treble region. The Evo has wider soundstage and greater detail retrieval. The Aria has a sub-bass emphasis compared to the Evo. The difference does not seem to be significant, but is apparent in an A-B test. However, the mid-bass seems very similar between these IMs. Separation of sub-bass from mid-bass and overall clarity was more noticeable on the Evo. Transients seemed slightly faster on the Evo. The mids are markedly different. The Aria has recessed mids. The bass often sounds louder than vocals on the Aria. The Aria, just like the Evo, has a sibilance emphasis. The Aria presents vocals closer to the ears. Mid-centric clarity and separation is noticeably greater on the Evo. The treble is also different. The Aria appears to have a mid-treble emphasis but an upper treble roll-off. In comparison, the Evo seems to have neutral treble until the upper region where there's a slight emphasis. Separation and clarity in this region is more obvious on the Evo. The Evo has wider soundstage and more detailed retrieval than the Aria. Comparisons like these help us understand where new products sit in the ever-expanding pantheon of IEMs. While there are some similarities here, all four IEMs sound different. You might prefer one over any other, or be unhappy with all of them. My first Astrotech IEM is an interesting prospect. I'm assuming, based on the scant information Astrotech provides, that the Evo and the stock Vesna have exactly the same voicing. In that case, I think it's intriguing Astrotech decided to release the same IEM for different price brackets. The $15 difference apparently is only for the detachable cable. That's a decision I've never seen any other company make. Astrotech is not clear about the performance or sound signature of their new IEMs. My experience was that the Evo has a neutral sub-bass but a slightly emphasized mid-bass. It has forward mids with sibilant female vocals. It has a slight upper treble emphasis. The Evo has clarity, detail, and above-average soundstage. Compared to the BL-03 and the Aria, the differences could not be more obvious. The Evo is not a warm-sounding IEM and definitely does not have the bass emphasis that the 03 and the Aria provide. Compared to the T2, the Evo is not analytical, even though it has similar detail and clarity. The difference, I think, comes with the way that the Evo presents bass. The Evo is very well built, fits perfectly fine, though to be honest, some people will be unhappy with the bullet-shaped design. The Evo is reasonably comfortable and comes with agreeable accessories, especially the cable. All of this brings us to value. Yes, for $35, the Evo is definitely value. I cannot tell you if you're going to like the sound signature or the fit, but I have no doubt this IEM is sturdy. If you already have the BL-03, Aria, or T2, and you want something that sounds different, the Evo will definitely fit that requirement. The Evo does not break any new ground in any aspect of delivery. It does not have the widest soundstage, the greatest amount of clarity or detail, or a neutral signature. It does not have build quality that is anything exceptional since we've seen it before at and below this price category. But the total package is worth considering. If you think you might like the Evo sound, then this IEM should be on a list among any other alternatives you are looking at.